Have you ever wondered what the alumni think of Coach Ben Johnson? What an alumni thinks about how this program is developing here with the Golden Gophers going into year two under a new head coach? Have you ever wondered? Well, we answer it today. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Day. That's right, every day, Monday through Friday, I'm host Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube, and if you have questions for future guests, drop them down below. Next week, we're going to be talking to Zaquan Bryan, a prospect who has committed from the 2023 class to the Golden Gophers. We're going to check in on him and how his high school season is going, his thoughts on the team, what he's excited for with the Gophers, and much more. So we'll do that next week. But today, we have a guest who is a former Gophers player on the basketball team. He currently coaches in Minnesota, and we're going to dive right in. So be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts at Locked On Golden Gophers. Wait no more, let's dive in. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today we welcome to the show a four-year Minnesota Gopher who had three postseasons with the Gophers, got it done on the floor in Minnesota, both offensively and defensively. Points, blocks, steals, you name it. Also spent time in the NBA Development League and then played overseas where he won Three titles in the Southeast Australian Basketball League. Three straight titles at that and back-to-back defensive player. And now he is the current head coach at Benilde St. Margaret's. Please welcome to the show, Damian Johnson. Thank you for joining us, Damian. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this opportunity. For sure. Now, I got to kick this off and start this off with... What sold you on coming to Minnesota? Because you are from Louisiana, correct? So I mean, that's quite quite the trip. Um, yeah, I just I grew up in a, a kind of a small town in Louisiana. Um, I had an opportunity to go to LSU and a couple other Louisiana schools or schools in the closer proximity, but I just wanted to get away from home as far as I can. So, <laughs> uh, so I got a chance to visit here during the fall. You know, Minnesota Falls are nice. So mm-hmm. I kind of fell in love with campus and uh, just being around the city with so many options of things you could do. It was an easy selling point for me. All right. So then with that, I have to ask, being from Louisiana, what was that first true winter experience like? <laughs> Oh, uh, it was horrible. <laughs> I mean, the first thing first is uh is trying to figure out how to drive. Yeah, during the winter time, so I had a, my truck up here, and I did not know how to drive, and I did not have snow tires, tires that could handle the snow. So I kind of <laughs> kept spinning out every five seconds, and then it was just that. It's not bad when it snows. It's just when it doesn't snow and it's just freezing cold. It's kind of that's the part that kind of tortured me my first year here. I definitely get that. I feel like it still tortures those who are local. Like you, when the air hurts your face, that's when you know you got a problem every once in a while. So, yeah, uh, and I feel like the hair, the air always hurts my face even to this day when it gets to the definitely when it's maybe ten or below. Yeah, that's too much for me. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into your time with the Gophers a little bit. What would you say was your best moment or your favorite moment on playing for this Gophers squad? Uh, I would say when we beat Wisconsin at the Cold Center. I think we might have been the first team in school history to win there. And, um, yeah, I just think going there, winning that game there where you could kind of shut up the crowd because <laughs> of West, Wisconsin fans. I know everybody talk about the Iowa Wisconsin as our rivals, but Wisconsin fans are way more annoying than Iowa fans. <laughs> I definitely agree with that statement, even from an outside perspective. So I'm with you on that one. Now, 
having been a player, having been a coach, what are some of the things that frustrate you the most from fans that just don't understand the finer details of being a collegiate athlete or collegiate basketball player? Um, well, the part I get frustrated the most here is just so much emphasis on local recruiting compared right. to being, you know, just being able to understand that you're going to find the same amount of talent no matter, matter where you look. It's not like it's all the talent is here. I know I think fans here, like this is one of the most one of us states I've ever been in where <laughs> they want to have all Minnesota people are, they want you to embrace being in Minnesota and being a Minnesotan. So, yeah, I feel like that's probably one of the um, biggest, one of my biggest gripes, but also understanding that um, I think we, they, I don't think fans understand that we right like right now, we're going through a full rebuild right now and right. it's happened right away. It's going to, it's going to take maybe two or three years, but at the same time, We got, I think we got everything in place to do it here. No, I'm right there with you. I think that fans, especially Gophers fans right now, focus too much on being from the state itself and don't look at the actual talent that is being brought in. And I know you and me have had conversations about this on Twitter, and it is wild how much it feels like if you get the top kid from Minnesota, that's all that matters to some people. And it's kind of, definitely not the right approach I feel like we're building something right here and we can jump into that in just a moment but I did want to ask before we get into recruiting before we get into maybe your thoughts on NIL is what was the atmosphere of playing in the NCAA tournament like did it feel different was the preparation for those games any different or what was that like uh it's definitely a different as far as going through the prep for NCAA games compared to um compared to regular games just because by then you got enough a lot more information on teams you get to right. see a lot of that's they're running um, you get a lot more opportunity to understand tendencies for players coaches and everything else and also just the atmosphere just being there when you do the practice in front of fans for like 30 minutes is is a quick it's not even a practice but just having <laughs> watching and everything else and cheering it just it's, it's a great experience that I, you know, I wish we could have experienced it a little more, but yeah, (laughs) one of the best experiences I had as well, though. I got you. A word from our friends over at Simply Safe. As everyone knows, athletes rise and fall in the ranks. So do teams. But when it comes to saving money, Simply Safe simply always stays on top. And right now, you can save big with Simply Safe Home Security. They're giving listeners 40% off their advanced security system. Simply Safe was just named the best home security of 2022 by US News. And I love it. You will love it too. Simply Safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. Think about that though, 40%. We were talking 20% just weeks ago. Now is the time. 40% and they have 24 seven monitoring. They they are able to detect with their advanced technology if it is a legitimate threat or a legitimate reason to inform your local authorities to be able to protect your home. There's not worries about false alarms. That's the biggest thing that stands out to me because I would hate, hate to have to deal with false alarm situations or constantly having to deal with people on the phone because, oh no, we just accidentally came in. No, that has been the best part about Simply Safe for me. And if that was a worry for you, well, I'm telling you, don't worry. Definitely give Simply Safe a try 24 7 professional monitoring, monitoring, and they have HD, completely HD streaming, so that way you can see exactly what is going on with your cameras, with your Simply Safe system. Don't miss a chance to save big when you protect your home and get that 40% off your order when you visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. So 
a little bit moving away from that. But like I said, I wanted to bring it back. What are your thoughts on the NIL and how that's getting bigger and being able to pay the student athletes? Um, I actually love it just because my experience, um, there were times, you know, it was times with me and a couple of my buddies where we were tapped. We didn't have any money at times during the summertime and we were struggling where we were go to McDonald's in Dankytown. And didn't they shut that down? Maybe so. I don't know. I but, think they did. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, we. I remember a few times I was going and we splitting, splitting uh, value meals together just because we all strapped with money. And the other part about the NIL, I mean, a school like Minnesota, we don't have the boosters or the alums that donate back. So it's not like we, it's going to be a strength of ours, but just seeing the opportunities to where you see schools like Kansas and football or different schools where they're going to be able to catch up a little bit. I think it's going to level the playing field out a little bit more, even though top schools going to still pay top dollar for kids. Right. But I think fans are looking at it like it's going to be the end of college sports, where it's going to actually help everything out because either way, the kids at those schools were getting paid. I know enough kids from different places when I was in the G League and other spots. Even in college, I go back home to LSU and I'll pull up on their campus to go to their open gyms and dudes were driving cars fresh out the lot. So it's like <laughs> NIL is something new. It's just something where now it's at least a little more regulated compared to what it was before. Right. I'm definitely with you there. I feel like it helps the bottom line. Like you already knew it was happening in some cases, like you were just saying, but it helps students like yourself, student athletes who could use the extra income because of, I don't think fans realize how much work goes into being a student athlete and keeping up with the grades just so you could be able to continue to play and whatnot. So I'm with you. I like it. And hopefully I know Dinky Town Athletes is trying to build up here so that way Minnesota can have something it might not be to the caliber of those high tier schools that have the boosters that can just shell out the money but hopefully in time they can make that right and i know there's a lot of fortune 500 companies here in minnesota hopefully we can start getting in connection with maybe some of those and making it a bigger scene here in minnesota but let's talk about recruiting let's talk about how you're feeling about this 2023 class and what coach ben johnson has been doing in his two recruiting cycles so far? What are your thoughts on the process? What are your thoughts on, or what have you heard? Because I know you're a coach as well. You're a high school coach. I don't know if you've had any interactions or some of your players have been interacting with Coach Ben Johnson, but how are you feeling about him in recruiting? Oh, I I know that that shouldn't be a complaint from anyone just because (laughs) he's seen all the work he's done. I mean, Thorson and Ben's been to our open gyms. We have uh, Jill and Wilson, who's uh, who's ranked 67 on um, 247 right now, 67 in the country. So they've been here to check him out. And I know, you know, they're everywhere else. I've talked to multiple coaches that they've been, they have been in their gyms. So I know he's going to, work hard to recruit locally so we won't lose players because the coach didn't put any effort i think he's put max effort but the, the being able to identify talent before other people is something that I, i've been impressed with would uh been um even the kid that went to tennessee ziegler i think his name he was one of the first to to uh notice him um as well as Caden Betts and some of the other kids and it's just like if he could find talent early and get on it before other people identify it I think that's going to help us be able to bring in some of the top tier talent or higher tier talent just because it gives him a a chance to build those relationships early before some of the bigger schools start hopping in and that's kind of how my recruitment went coming out of high school I was more you know diamond in the rough where people didn't know who I was at first and then a whole bunch of high majors start offering me late in the process. And I think Ben's doing a good job of identifying those type of players because I feel like we got a realistic shot on those guys. And then as we keep adding more talent, I think the winning is going to follow through. And, I mean, if you look at what we did with last year's team, I was only expecting seven wins total. And for us to win as many games or compete as much as we did, that's just show the coaches there. Now we got to start adding the pieces to kind of keep building I love what they're doing over there right now. Awesome. No, I love that a lot. And I liked how you kind of touched in on your own recruiting as well. I was going to ask you, what 
what was important when you were doing recruiting as a high school athlete or what do you advise your high school players to keep in mind when it comes to the recruiting process? Um, well, one thing I tell my players to not do is chase, chase high majors. Um, sometimes kids are always looking for the better option when they have a pretty good option in front of them where they could get an opportunity to develop and grow. Um, seeing David Roddy last year uh, get drafted is a, a perfect example where he could have chased and waited for blue bloods and everything else. I waited for high major offers, but he took the spot that's the right fit and it helped them develop. And I feel like a lot more of the Minnesota athletes that do leave aren't leaving to go into better options. I think they're just going to situations that kind of fit fit them and help them develop more. And I think that's one of the most important things, go where you can develop. I think a lot of kids think they're going to be the next one and done type player, but that's really unrealistic. So you want to go somewhere where you could play, develop for three to four years, and you want to continue playing basketball. It's going to help your career kid continue to grow. So I think that's something that a lot of kids fail to realize. And they all, and I've had kids who went to top schools and they transfer once twice you don't want to be stuck in that in that kind of cycle right no I love that insight and I clearly BSM has a good one out there running things I'm definitely excited for what your guys' season is going to look like coming up I'm gonna have to swing through and check out a couple games as well but I did want to ask you about a current player on the roster Jameson Battle do you think that Jameson Battle has the ability or has shown the ability to play at the next level in the NBA um, I think he's going to have an opportunity just because the way he shoots the ball and he's a versatile player where he could guard multiple positions. I think um one of the things that's going to make people nervous is this athleticism and just wondering if he's going to be able to guard people on the perimeter consistently. But I just think even as an undersized four at times, he could find a spot. I think that the game's just moving to where everything's so positionless and mm-hmm way he shoots the ball at such a quick you know he's got a quick release and everything else I feel like he will get every opportunity to show that he belongs and I think with a big year this year I I see him I don't necessarily think he gets drafted but just being around good coaches and developing his game he's going to definitely be able to stick on our roster so whether it's if he's drafted or if he's signed as an unsigned rookie, I think he's going to be able to stick on the roster and be able to play for at least a few years. Cause I just think his shooting is his shooting ability is something, something special. Right? No, I love that. And you mentioned positionless basketball and how the game is trending that way. I feel like a lot of Gophers fans right now, at least the ones that I'm catching on Twitter and interactions at different things, they're stuck on traditional positions and they're like, we don't have enough guards or we need a bigger center or we need, what do you think about that? But what do you think about how, I think that's why I get excited. And I don't know if that's you as well on what is happening with this recruiting is because you can see how these guys are coming in with the athleticism to guard across multiple positions or to handle the rock. Like Jaden Henley's six, seven, but he could bring the ball up potentially. How are you feeling about positionless basketball and how it's building here? I think what we're doing is amazing. If I was a college coach, I would be doing something similar to Ben where I'm recruiting a lot of three, four men, but they got potential to play on the wing and perimeter. They got a little bit of handle, but they could guard multiple guys just because if you look at it, Villanova kind of has been doing that for a while where they always have undersized fours. Their fives aren't usually that big. They're more like undersized guards. So they're able to switch a lot of different screen actions. They also don't always have a traditional point guard. They always have point guards that's combo guards as well. So, I mean, the more pe- more players that you can put in different spots, the more different lineup combinations you could have. And the more, and I also like length. So I think one thing that people get stuck on is what always worked in the Big Ten compared to what can work in the Big mm-hmm. Ten. So I look at the way we have a lot of length, a lot of size, and then the then our system where it's more of a spread out system. I think it's going to be able to actually have an impact. And and I think even our best years with Coach Smith, we had a lot of guys. I played the four at six six, and we you know we beat a lot of teams. We always. I think we had a coach with sometimes a different temperament. We would have been a lot better when it got later in the season, but that's a whole different (laughs) conversation. But 
I just look at Ben's temperament and the way he coaches the guys. Guys buy into him and buy, guys play like they just love playing for him. So once you got that part going along with the length, athleticism and shooting, I think we could have a great squad going forward. I mean, you could play Jamison at the two. You could play him at the four. And then, you know I mean, he's able to initiate offense. That's hard for teams to, to prepare for. You got yeah. so many guys that could do so many different things where – it's not going to be an easy scout for for us, and we play a, a look at if you look at even go to state right now, they're the best team in over the last ten years. And Steph is technically technically not a traditional point guard; he's more of a shooting guard that's playing point. And that's right. the reason why Draymond so successful with those guys because they got a guy that could kind of initiate the offense and let stuff be off the ball. I think that's just where basketball is heading right now. Yeah, no, I'm definitely with you. And I love that insight. I love that. Hopefully everybody that listens to this can maybe calm down a little bit and take a breather like, oh, maybe this this different style is OK and we can let it play out and it doesn't have to have immediate success this year, but let it like build up. Let us get that rebuild, as you were saying, initiated. I think we have a good start on it, but you can't expect immediate success and get mad if it's not there right away. But first, a word from our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. You got to kick off 2023 right, and you have to do it by hiring that right employee for your small business. It makes a world of a difference having that right hire to kick off the new year. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster. So all you gotta do is create a free job post at LinkedIn Jobs, and then you add a purple hiring frame on your personal profile, so that way people in your network can see that and send the right candidates, people that have been already vetted by some of your contacts, your way. Then you can use simple tools like screening questions to make it easier to focus on the candidates that are the right skill set and the right experience so you can prioritize quicker who should get interviewed. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality candidates versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right qualified people to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post about your job for free terms and conditions apply. Now I have three more questions for you, then I'll let you go. I know you got other things to do today. So the first is what is it like playing professional basketball overseas? What was the atmosphere, the fans, the grind of it all? How was that for you? Um, It's different. I mean, playing overseas, it's, it's tough when you're, I was in Japan by myself and I was in a, I was in a college town and we had a local English speaking university where they had students from across the world there. So it was fun going with those guys, but it's a long time where you're just away from family, you're away from everything. And if you by yourself, you get, it just gets lonely at times. So you got to always find stuff to keep you busy, but just being able to experience different cultures where it was a, a great opportunity. I mean, I love the food in Japan. And then when I got <laughs> Australia was a lot more, a lot easier just because the, the language piece right. and as well as I was married and I had kids. So I wasn't by myself the whole time in Australia, <laughs> just such a, a cool, relaxed place. Like, so it was a, that was a great experience. It was a lot better. But yeah, it's a long grind. It's a lot longer than than people could even imagine. But it's it love basketball. It's kind of worth it though. It's still fun. It was still great to be part of it. And um, I'm even like next year. I'm planning on visiting my teammates from Australia. Um, next August it'll be ten years since we went out for that first championship together. So I was going to visit. So you get a chance to build new friends, and it, it's just a great experience from that standpoint as well. That's awesome. I love that. All right, two more questions. I have to ask you a little bit about the football team. I know you pay attention to the football team as well. And so any thoughts on the quarterback situation right now? I know some fans are already calling for the young kid in eighth and Cali McManus, and others are like, if Tanner's healthy, he needs to be playing. What are your thoughts with the quarterback situation and the Gophers? Um, 
it's a lot to that, man. And I just think I'll hate that people like I'm. I do it sometimes myself because I get disappointed in Tanner just because if you're in college for six years, some of those mistakes you made during your freshman and first years you shouldn't be making still. But at the same time, I think we're panicking a little bit too much. Um, we're still at expectations to me where we only have two losses, and I feel I felt like before the we'll probably go nine and three yeah um what possibility to do better i feel still feel like that's realistic i mean the next six games even tonight i feel like clifford is no different than tanner morgan to me. and i think fans look at it like oh we got the worst big 10 qb but all the big 10 qbs are the same there's none that really stand out above the rest um if you look at ohio state i mean that's something different but that's a whole bunch of different athletes around right. that well but no one else has really got a QB that could just just turn the game like you know could just change the game and I feel like our defense could hold like tonight's game I don't feel like that's a guaranteed loss like a lot of people feel right um, I just don't think Penn State is as good as people think but I do think James Franklin is a GOAT type coach but <laughs> I just think Penn State is as good as people think. I think Franklin's been doing a good job of building something there, but they kind of have the same QB issues that's pre preventing them from taking that next step. So I, 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 I think we shouldn't rush Tanner out the door, but I would like to see the young guy get a shot now that Tanner's injured just so we can see what he could do because I feel like Tanner arm, arm strength has held us back the last few years. And he'll and he's not mobile as well. I feel like that's two recipes for a disaster at QB at this standpoint in, in football. I feel like you got to have either one or the other, a big arm QB or a mobile guy. All right, a quick thing I want to add on that one, because I'm going to probably, this show will probably go out on Tuesday for fans. So they'll have watched the game and had a little more insight. But I do want to say if Ethan plays tonight versus Penn State and he does well, do you keep playing him? It, yes. Okay. <laughs> it, it finished that statement. Yes. Um, I love, I love what Tanner's. First off, I don't think people. I I love that Tanner stayed at the U for six years from being from Kentucky. Right. He he embraces the whole, you know, being a Minnesota guy, the culture. He's went through a lot of stuff off the field, and he has, you know, he's at a point where I love a lot about him. But at the same time. If we got a younger guy that's a bigger arm that we could kind of develop, not saying we're throwing away the season, but we could still win at the same time, have a younger guy, I'm with it because I just think next year we'll be a lot better off compared to – I feel like we just going in circles with Tanner as a six-year. I was kind of upset. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even – I was upset when Tanner and Mo decided to stay just because it's. I feel like when you have that, it makes younger guys with talent want to leave because they feel like they'll never get their shot. Right. And six years in, it's not like – I didn't feel like those two was going to push us to a playoff run anyway. So, I just – because I like – I kind of like Clark as well just because he was big, tall, and big arm <laughs> guy. Different conversation. All right, so we'll close the show off with this. What should Gophers fans keep in mind as the program is rebuilding or in the early stages under Coach Ben Johnson and this year coming up? Um, I just think they got to keep in mind that we, last year we had a, a, a Band-Aid band type team where we had a lot of people who were just there for one year and we try to make it work. I think now with so many young kids, we have a good mix with youth and older guys, and we could possibly have the same team next year. I think fans got to just be patient and look at this as a three-year process where this year we just showing signs of improvement. Next year we should be taking that step to go into the NCAA tournament. Not saying we can't this year. But I just think the expectation is a little too far. NIT birth is more realistic, in my opinion. And then the year after, we should be taking that next step to becoming more of, of what Ben's vision is. I think the year after next will be his fourth year here and his recruiting. I mean, I know he's already after some of the 2024s locally pretty hard. And I know he's he's got a, a big net out for 2025s where he's already starting to identify talent there. So I just think 
we're going to have – he's going to add the players he want, the right guys, guys who want to be here. And just looking at the Evans pickup alone, I feel like that's a huge step in the right direction. Even though, like, bigger guys always make me nervous because you never know what they're going to do. Most tall guys at that height sometimes can't chew gum and run at the same time, but <laughs> – Gonna come in as an elite rim protector, and that's one. Like if you got an elite, that's half the game in college basketball. Having someone that can protect the rim, make everything difficult. Every year that Patino was successful, he had a rim protector. He had Reggie or or Daniel there to protect the rim. So mm-hmm. I think that's a big, big part of college basketball as far as setting your defense. If you got someone that can protect the rim, you're already ahead of the game because usually in college, most most players. I know fans love the purity of college basketball, but to be honest, the product as far as talent on the court is not as good as some of the pro guys. Most college guys can't shoot consistently, can't finish consistently, and they think about stuff that's not basketball related most of the time, trying to, you know, they're going to find those girls and everything else. So (laughs) we got to understand there's a lot more to college sports than just, wins and losses and sometimes it's just looking at someone that's developing and building a program that could be sustainable and I feel like Ben's doing that right now well thank you so much I appreciate you coming on and we're gonna have to at least try to get you on again sometime in this season hopefully if you're not too swamped with coaching Benilde St. Margaret as well thank you for joining us and best of luck this season as well I uh, appreciate it. And like I said, I appreciate you having me on. That's, I enjoy it. For sure. All right, Gophers fans, that's going to do it for us. Be sure to follow the podcast on YouTube and subscribe. This is Kane Rob signing off. Row the boat. Sky you, Go Gophers.